Massey, and welcome to the Essence of Emerald. You know, one of the great things about living down in New Orleans is going to camp. No, not summer camp. I'm talking about, well, it's called Sportsman's Paradise. That's what the state's called. I'm talking about the fishing and the duck camps. Just a bunch of guys and gals just hanging out and sipping a few cold ones and a couple of Coca-Colas and, hey, I'm the one who gets to cook what we catch usually. But today I'm going to share with you a couple of recipes that my buddies and I down in New Orleans love. One's for the fishing camp and the other one's for the duck camp. Now, let's talk about the fish camp. You know, one of the most classic noun Louisiana dishes, fish dishes, it's spelt like court bouillon. You know, I went to cooking school and studied court bouillon. I, I always thought that that meant a liquid and lemon and, well, it's spelled the same way in Louisiana. It's coubion. It's pronounced one word, coubion. It's kind of a fish stew. And that's what I'm going to share with you right now, a little classic. I'm going to start with a little oil. You know, like my friend Marcel says, is, hey, are you Catholic? And can your mama make a roux? Well, this is it. I got oil. You can use butter. And I got a little flour. And we can add more oil. You know, I think that's one of the first things that they teach you down in Louisiana. Once you have a bottle, they teach you how to make a roux. And we'll add a little more flour. Now, this is not going to be no thick, heavy-duty roux now. This is just going to be a nice little roux. And Marcel, you'd be proud of me right now. Because look at that. That almost a perfect roux right there. Now we're going to just sort of get a nice little color and cook that roux. And you got to stir it every now and then. If you don't stir it, it's going to start sticking. Can't do that. So you just see that right there? It's very, very important, the color of this roux, particularly these couple of dishes that we're making. Now, we're not making a gumbo. We're making cubion. So when we get a little color like that in that roux, that's when we're going to add some onions, some celery, and bell pepper, known as the trinity. And we're going to put that and cook that vegetables in that roux. You see that? That's what we're going to do. You see how that just all those vegetables right there? Now you got to let them cook. You got to let them get tender and you got to let them get cooked. Now well, let me tell you about this country seasoning. Country seasoning is very simple. You got a couple of bay leaves because there's laurel trees all over the place. And we'll give a little salt on them vegetables so they taste good. And the other seasoning is this one right here, this cayenne pepper. We're going to add a little cayenne. Well, let's add a little more. Whoo! Then, we're going to season that up so that it tastes good. Now, let me tell you one good thing about this Kubion. After these vegetables cook, and I'll tell you, I keep seeing it and hearing it and reading it and I keep cooking it and I keep cooking and I keep cooking and I keep learning more about it. And my friend Marcel, and I'm sure it's from him, her mama, is about these tomatoes with the on. When you add the vegetables to cook, you add them tomatoes in there. Those tomatoes have got to cook. They got to actually stew. They got to actually stew. And I couldn't believe it. But I'll tell you, finally, and Marcel keeps telling me again, Marcel's my good friend down in Louisiana. Marcel Benvenu is her name. She said, Emerald, you got to let them tomatoes just keep stewing and stewing. 
Then all of a sudden, after they stew, they're going to make a film. And I said, make a film? And she said, yep. You got to cook them tomatoes at least 45 minutes, maybe even an hour before they're right. And they got this little film. And let me tell you, she is absolutely right. So what I got right here, this is about one hour. You see that? That's that little film that those tomatoes are making. And that's all exactly what we have in there. You see that? It's almost like a gravy. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to turn this down a little bit right now. We're going to stir it around. I'm going to sit here and stir it around and stir it around. And when we come back, I'm going to finish this great Kubion. Don't go away. Stay with me on the Essence of Emerald. Hey, welcome back to the Essence of Emerald. Now for the final ingredient, that great fish that we just caught down at the fish camp in Louisiana. You know, speckled trout. Speckled trout. One of our most delightful, favoriteful fish. Now, I'm going to talk about speckled trout for a minute. But look at this. You see that? That's that little... You see how the tomato, that little film on top? That's exactly what we're looking for. Now, when that happens, whoo, you simply take your fish and you layer that fish in there. And you can put some shrimp. You can put some oysters at the last minute. You put your fish in there. Now you cover this up. You're just going to let this cook for a bit. Hey, you could always just add a little splash of wine, too. You know? A drunken trout. But speckled trout is everywhere. Beautiful speckled trout. You know, not so much of the redfish anymore, but a lot of the speckled trout. We do a lot of great things with these. Particularly, after you fillet them, you want to sort of go and Get a little bit of those fine bones because the bones are very, very small. So you want to be sure that those little bones come out. See what I just did there? You want to just sort of take, if you take your blade like that, actually those little guys will just sort of pop out. And then with either with the pliers, you don't even need a pliers because this is not one of those fish that has been big. This is basically only maybe a pound and a half two pound most trouts but make sure that you do that and the other thing is that once this kubion this great kubion starts cooking look at that huh at the very end when the fish is cooked to finish this we're gonna add a little hot sauce just to kick it up a bit and that's when we're going to Add a little bit of green onion and a little bit of fresh parsley at the end. Right at the end. I don't want this to cook too, too much. Just at the end like that. We're going to stir it up. And then we're just going to cover that. And I want to show you a little, a little technique. Just a little technique about that green onion. You want to wait till the very, very end. You just clean off the tops. And really what you want to do is you want to get the green onion as fine as possible. You see how I'm doing that? Just as fine, fine, fine as possible. Get all the delicious flavor of the green onion. Really, really, really fine. We call this a little chiffonade of green onion. So that way, when this great kubion is near complete, whoo, just like at the camp, we'll get us a big bowl. See how that trout fillet looks? Doesn't that look delicious? Put that trout fillet right there. 
Where's that other guy? I don't want to break him up too bad. And if it does, that's okay too, because that's some good eating right there. Woo! Then you get a little bit of that kubi on. And you gotta have some crusty bread. Doesn't that look delicious? And then we'll just sort of finish it with a little bit of parsley, a little bit of that delicious green onion. And there you have a Louisiana classic, especially at the fish camp. And right after the break, I'm going to take you to the duck camp and show you one of the duck dishes. Don't go away. We'll be right back on the Essence of Emerald. Welcome back to the Essence of Emerald. Hey, what do you think you cook up at a Louisiana duck camp? Well, I had a letter right here from my really good friend, Michelle Faber, in Mandeville, Louisiana, and Steve Woodruff in Scottsdale, Arizona. Hey, down there in uh, Louisiana, thank you, Cablevision, for uh, providing the Essence of Emerald on TVFN. Well, Michelle Faber, you asked for it right here. You're going to get it. My duck gumbo. Let me tell you the good thing about this duck gumbo. First thing you got to do is you got to make a roux to a good duck gumbo. Now, I don't know what's being caught, what's being hunted, but I can tell you I just got me some regular duck, but maybe you get some teals or some some mallard duck. That will work really great for this gumbo too. But you know the good thing about this roux is that Miss Marcel's told me this a bunch of times and I tell you I'm trying to practice. I say, well Miss Marcel, when do you think that roux gonna, is going to be done? And then she taught me. This roux is going to be done after you have two beers, because this is a two-beer roux. That means after you get done drinking two beers, the roux is done, and you can start. So while you're all watching, oh, yeah, this is a great, this is a beater beer. These are my friends down there in Louisiana. But my favorite one, this is the amber. My favorite one they make is Turbo Dog. How about that for a name, Turbo Dog? Well, all right, I think you get the, get the point here. After this roux gets cooking, really, really good and brown, you got to keep stirring it. And once it gets good and brown, that really good dark chocolatey color, then what you're going to do is we're going to start browning some duck meat, ducks that have just been all cut up in pieces. We're going to start browning them off. And Mr. Steve, thanks for your letter. And Miss, Miss Michelle, you keep on watching, darling. Well, we're going to cook up them ducks now and get them good and brown. Now, once they get good and brown, and get some good color in them ducks, because the color of the duck and that roux is really what's going to be that finished, that finished color. And once you get them really good and brown, and if you get a little excess oil that comes out from your roux, don't worry about it. We're going to skim that out. And what we're going to do now, once we start getting that, is we're going to add some trinity, some celery and bell pepper, and some onion. And once we get them laid out on top, I'm going to get us a few bay leaves. Now, we're going to season our vegetables and a little bit of that duck with some salt. And 
little spice and a little cayenne. You want to keep cooking these and cooking these and cooking them. I mean, you got to just keep sweating them out. Just keep sweating them out, cooking them vegetables and cooking that duck. And after you do that for about 15 or 20 minutes, get a really good color. Then what you're going to do, I know, you're going to have to share a little bit. You're going to have to share a little bit of that beer, especially if you're getting on the second or the third one now. While that roux is still cooking and them ducks are getting brown, you should share a little bit of your beer with your gumbo. And once that cooks down a little bit, we're going to add some garlic. And we're going to add some of that, some of that here sauce. We're going to add a lot of that sauce, jack it up a little bit. And then I just got a brown stock, or you can use a chicken stock, whatever you have. And if you have a good brown roux and you do it right, you won't need to have too much. A bunch of the color of it, anyhow, it'll make it your own. But you see how the duck, the duck is really gotten good and brown. We brown them really, really good. Now, you bring this up to a boil. Well, I guess it's time to have it a little bit. Getting close to that second beer now. Uh, good friends of the beater. Whew. Now. We'll bring this up, we're going to cover it. And guess what? Looks like we got a little duck gumbo right there. You see the color of that roux? The color of that roux is unbelievable. And it smells that deep. Now, when you get that, what we're going to do now, before we finish this up, we certainly know what the beer tastes like. So now we want to see what our gumbo tastes like, and then we've got to readjust the seasoning. Ooh. Mmm. Rich. Deep. Wild. All the flavors just bursting out. Well, you got to cook up some rice because, you know, we got rice everywhere in Louisiana. We got rice fields all over the place, particularly where a lot of these duck camps are. Because a lot of the duck camps are on the opposite end of the fish camps. The fish camps are on the southeastern part of the state. And in the middle of the state, we're heading towards Paston Homer and St. Martinville and Delacroix and those areas and the Bayou Tesh. That's where all these little wooden structures, these little duck blinds are all over. And you go out there with a bunch of friends and spend the night because you got to get up so damn early. Lots of a beat of beer, nice and cold, and play a few hands of cards, have a little gumbo, drink a little beer, and then you get up, crack a dawn, and go out there and do the hunt. Well, I never go. I usually just sleep in and I just do the cooking. Now, one of the great things, when the duck starts coming off and you adjust the seasoning on how you want them, let me tell you, what we're going to do, we're going to take, we're going to serve up some of this delicious, look how rich that is. Woo! I'm going to have me one more ladle of that. And then what you do is you just take a lot of good steaming rice. And then if you want to add a little bit more of that special stuff, and a little bit of that green onions, a little bit of that parsley, and boy, I'll tell you, you get another one of those cold, cold beers with that big bowl of gumbo and woo!
You right at home, right down there in Louisiana. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me today. And see you the next time, right here on The Essence of Emerald. See you now.